I'm Alex. And I'm Teddy. And I'm Spencer. And we are the Button Mappers. Hey, the Button Mappers. Welcome, Maps and Mittens, to this rendition of Is It an RPG? We got a hell of a show today. We're the only show on all of TV or the internet where we determine, is it an RPG? And today we've got two fabulous contestants. First off, I'm pleased to introduce Alex of the Turbo Zone family. Here I am. I'm so excited. Thought he's going to bring more to that. All right. And then next up, (laughs) next up, we also have... Teddy from Majority Family. Hey, hey guys. Yeah, I'm here to represent the T family from all T's. Emma Mile, uh, Green, and everyone's favorite Lipton. And that, remember, if you want to see uh, Majority, or if you want to see Turbo Zone, or if you're looking at the button mappers and just want to see more of that, you can find all of us on YouTube. Make sure that you're liking the video, you're commenting below on how excited you are for the show, and uh, you click the subscribe button on all those channels so you can see more amazing content every Monday. Don't forget about Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Show me Apple Podcasts and Spotify. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so fun and bored. <laughs> Where I have uh, actually been uh, slowly but surely putting all the episodes up that I missed for like the last five months. <laughs> all right, boys. Do you know the rules? Uh, we've we've got some submissions from the pe- the folks at home, the viewers. We've added a few of our own. We've put them on our Discord. Make sure you go check it out if you haven't already. We've got a lot of great conversations going on in there. And uh, we've nailed down 15 entries. And we're going to determine as a group, is it an RPG? Name of the game, right? Name of your channel. Name of my channel, RPG Archive. (laughs) So (laughs) we're going to archive these games, though. Uh but before we get into that, so the crowd at home is under the understanding and we're under the same umbrella. Guys, what is an RPG? Really pretty girl. All right, Teddy, what is an RPG? A uh, rare primal Grudon. <laughs> well, it's a good start. A really puffy gator. The puff factor is high on the gator. Trendy porn girl. All right, I'm all in. <laughs> Family show. <laughs> Spencer, RPGs Spencer. are contentious. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, say, what, Spencer, what is? You're, you're the RPG guy, so maybe you should you should open. What is an RPG to you? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a really hard question. So, I I always looked at the as obviously it stands for role playing game but where the focus of a game is the advancement of your character both story and stat i guess and that's you could take that in a million different directions and pick it apart but that's <laughs> my that's my very basic description so an advancement of story and stats Ideally with a limited character set, but yes. Okay. But I mean, you could break that rule of many, like Suica didn't would beg to differ, but I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. What about you guys? Yeah, it's so tricky because there's like Wikipedia will define a role playing video game as a game with a story and a character. And that's just every game ever. So I think there's a couple of characteristics that you have to identify from the genre that are staples from the more traditional RPGs, usually like a leveling up system where I think that the advancement of the story is highly contingent on your character's development. How are they growing in terms of attributes, in terms of stats, and also how is my party? 
Yeah. It's you good. like the nachos. I wasn't invited to your party. <laughs> well, it's a single player I, adventure. I didn't, I didn't get to use my Teddy. Teddy's party is more of a Dragon Quest 1 experience. Yeah. Um, I'm the least RPG-ish here. <laughs> so for me to define an RPG is actually kind of difficult because I'm less experienced. But uh, I don't know, man. I guess like the character progression is important. The the story progression is important. I also feel like the length of a game might be a little more important when it comes to an RPG as opposed to other things. I mean, very rarely have I ever played a, a, an RPG that's less than ten hours <laughs> or so. You know, so, yeah, so uh, that that also kind of factors into me <laughs> thinking about RPGs. Is like, is it a game that I can play for ten hours or a game that I can play for one hundred and twenty hours? <laughs> and well, yeah, and I and I think that that ties into the idea that it's about the advancement of a character and not yeah. just the story. Because, I mean, any game really could have a story that you advance, but. Your the idea is to dedicate yourself to the characters as well, and so with that you're expected to have some time with them. So I think you're right. The time is usually higher on a on an RPG. Usually, but not always. Because I'm thinking Evo Land One was like three hours. Still consider mm. the evolution of RPGs. <clears throat> That's true. Again, the, you know, usually it's I kind of a joke that. game, but. <laughs> Well, one that isn't a joke is the Voice of Cards games by Yoko Taro. Those are like around 10 hours long. So that's not really not that long for an RPG. Um, but they're still RPGs. It's just like, I don't know. So the, I guess the link can differ. Sure. I mean, yeah. dude, there's exceptions to every single rule in video games. So, I mean, that's yeah, literally, that's in a way, that's kind of the point of making games is to break rules and see what is fun. So like literally every game is an RPG to some extent now because of what they've done with those rules so it's hard I, I because just... it's, if you go by genre it's like so easy just like a platformer is a game where you platform a puzzle game is a game where you solve puzzles an rpg is a what exactly <laughs> it's like like you are playing a role in essentially any game that you play even like tetris you're i mean you could argue it's not but you're playing the role of a person that is placing blocks and trying to get a high score. I don't know. It's it's so like, yeah, RPG is so difficult to pin down. It's it's almost pointless. That's why we love them. Best wrestling uh contender. Hell yeah. that are hard to pin down. <laughs> I before this recording, I was actually playing some Gran Turismo 7 and that's a car RPG. <laughs> ho ho. Or, there was actually a car RPG that we looked at when we were doing Beyond Oasis, like Car Battle or Joe. Mm. Yeah, I I actually know that one. Look at me. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keep looking, Teddy. Keep looking. Don't stop. <laughs> Break eye contact. <laughs> so we do have 15 entries, correct? But I don't want to list them all like we do normally do for a ranking or something. Let's just go down the list one by one. It, it'll be it. a surprise each time. All right. Just play roles. Just you guys role play. <laughs> you guys ready to you guys ready to roll play? <laughs> roll it, roll it, roll it, play. <laughs> oh shit! I want to be Fred Durst. <laughs> I'm Fred Durst. <laughs> All right. Well, first up is from. Do we want to say who they're from on the thing, or do we not care? No. Uh, first up is the Durst up. This one's from Fred. <laughs> from Fred himself. <laughs> so the first one was sent us directly from Fred Durst. It is. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. <laughs> I'm right on that, right? Yeah. That's Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Yeah, okay. that is Symphony of the Night. That's the best one. <laughs> so, here we are. Gotcha. So, man, it's funny. We're at the gate. Man. We're, this is tough. Well, okay. And, and I think what's what separates this one, I, like, I noticed while we were going through, each one of these games, I believe, has like another genre that it seeps into. So... This one would be your RPG mixed with a Metroidvania, which it's Castlevania. Actually, it is Metroidvania. This was the birth of Metroidvania. I hate that term, but here was it, it is. Well, wait, wouldn't um, Super Metroid be the birth? Or maybe, maybe even NES Metroid? There wasn't anything Castlevania about the Metroid games. The whole point of oh, Metroidvania okay. was the combination. But how could it have happened within... 
Castlevania. I don't know. That's weird to me. Gotcha. But especially because like RPG elements are so uh, prevalent in Symphony of the Night. Mm -hmm. It almost like I don't think it's fair to say that this is just a Metroidvania. This clearly has some influence from like um, I don't know, just action RPGs and like leveling up your weapons. Character mm -hmm. you do level up. It's not anything yeah. seen in either of those franchises up to that point. True. Yeah, a lot of equipment and like abilities and stuff you can change out in your character, which also I think is a big part of RPGs, is like having different weapons and uh, uh, accessories and stuff for your characters is important, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you, you know, you, you can really customize Alucard to play the way you want him to play, which does fit the RPG mold. And also, I, that like level up jingle in the game was just ingrained in my brain. Uh, do -do 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 -do, whenever you get like the the, the level up sound, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I hard would... because there's like the question of like, is it? Are you willing to say it's an RPG, or is it a game with RPG elements? Mm. So to me, I... first and foremost, it's a it's an action platformer. Adventure. That's true. And just to be clear, we we don't have room to like say, well, maybe or sort of. This is a yes or no. <laughs> so yeah. we have to come to an agreement. <laughs> I guess. Okay. So, like, Does the game encourage you to to like mess around with your, your stats shit. and and yeah, like customize and. Which cut even that is up for debate, like the customizing your stats, because that didn't really start until like mid Super Nintendo. But like back on the NES, like Dragon Quest, there wasn't really much customization anyway. So that's even up for debate. But I don't know. I, I think it lets you play around with your character enough that I would, I think I would consider like everyone plays the, like a, a, a way that they want to play it and upgrades the stuff they want to upgrade. And even if you're going back to Dragon Quest, part of the original Dragon Quest and improving in the game was equipping better armor and weapons, which very much is a feature of this game. Mm -hmm. You are role-playing Alucard, in my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm on the yes side of this. Yeah, I, I think there's enough here to justify it being considered an RPG, even though it also has action platforming elements as well. Right. Yeah. So you know what Alucard spelled backwards is action RPG. That's yes. true. <laughs> it's literally in the name. So there you go. Okay, we got our first yes. <clears throat> Drag it over, Spence. <laughs> <laughs> Bing. Ooh, you know what we could do? Maybe I can like Oh, uh, I wish right. we would have had like emojis ready for this. I could have, uh, I could have well, done it. Just litter emoji. like RPG emojis. On it? Yeah. Do we do we have emojis we can just use from the on the button mappers? Uh, uh put put a uh, put clue clue land. Okay, and then what would not what would be a no? Wait. Columns. Columns. Yeah. Okay, so yes is clue clue, no is columns. Yeah. Are you reacting to the whole post or what? Just the just the post of the of just the game. Yeah, the game. just the picture. Okay. And then apparently it has a, a bison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got a bison too. And bison. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. All right. Next up, if you thought Castlevania had a good soundtrack, wait till you hear Parasite Eves. It's also good. This is a Squaresoft game you listened. Wow. on the PlayStation, and it combines RPG elements with horror games. Ooh. Of course, we're going to talk about more, but I, I think this is definitely a yes. I mean, I think this is like, it's, I think this is an RPG first and foremost, and a horror game. <laughs> like I kind of melded together. <clears throat> I agree. Um, it, it's a very, very in-depth RPG and a, a hardcore one if you're willing to do the post-game content, the the 100 uh, level tower. The tower. Yeah, um, the tower. <laughs> very, very hardcore RPG. I will say 
that there are moments that are not RPG like in it. And that that's what makes it really the horror. Like at the end, when you're fighting the final boss and it's just like slow like dragging itself around. Very un RPG like and very, very horror like. Mm-hmm. But I I mean this game in its roots definitely is an RPG. Just this first game, the sequels, the Parasite Eve 2 and Third Birthday are definitely not RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> they just abandoned that all together. So yeah. Just this first title. Yeah. Can you explain to me how it or what the RPG roots are? So it, it, <clears throat> it. Oh, boy. All right. So the game, when you enter a battle, you're in like a circular. It's been a while, but you're in a you're in like a field and you can move. And then you can take an action. And the action is based off of statistics, like shooting slash melee. Those are all based off of statistics, based on the stats of your weapons and your character. And then the enemy gets to do that as well, which you can... It's not like inherently an action game, but you can theoretically dodge if you can run around and and move fast enough. Um, It's... The way I would describe it is like if you mixed Resident Evil with a tell, like like the combat of like a Tales of game almost, but with more like ranged combat focus. That's sort of how I see it. It's yeah, very it, strange, but it, it like is its own crazy battle mechanics that do fit like the RPG mold. Yeah, it's definitely Circle things yeah. sound like Shadow Hearts. You know, I see Bio Phoenix play that a lot. He's got like the whole grid thing open, so I can understand. Is it turn? It's turn based. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Again, you can kind of you can you can theoretically it. move during you can move during their turn, so you can you can dodge their attack. Uh, but it is yeah, it's really hard to explain. But it's definitely an RPG mechanic. Yeah, I understand. I'm playing a game now that I I sound similar, but okay. All right, so we give yeah. this one a yes. Yeah, definitely. Give it a bison. I, <laughs> give it a bison. <laughs> You can do your bison. Whoever did that. <laughs> All right. Next up. Consider it bison. Consider it, oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> next up, we have um, Alex. How would you define this Monster Hunter series as, besides an RPG? <laughs> oh, man. I don't. It's. But I I haven't played anything else like Monster Hunter, so I don't know. It's just Monster Hunter. <laughs> well, you wouldn't say it's like, like, like a, a, I don't like know if there's a, a, act, an action hunting and gathering game. <laughs> I, no I, yeah, I would describe it. it as like um, an item based RPG instead of a traditional RPG. Yeah. See, this is this is the one that I think is going to. St- is going to challenge us because where we are basically a lot of our stuff on like, does it have stats and story? This has no story. The most hunter games usually have no story really besides like, Oh, you're in a village hunting some monsters worse than people. And it also has no stats. The stats are all just like, can you make better armor? That's basically the stat. Like you don't level up. <laughs> you just make better equipment. But the equipment has stats. Yeah, so I, I guess that kind of counts, but still, like your character themselves don't like earn stats. There's no skill tree, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's the it's progression like of the game based heavily on your character's de- like ad- development at all, like how yes. their gear proficient you become. Your, yes, your gear, the gear is too. Key. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's like, a hard one. Yeah, it's all about yeah, it's all about killing a monster, skinning it, making a better gear, and then killing an even bigger monster. <laughs> So, yeah. this, I think just even the 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 we didn't really talk about this, but the marketing, like the selling of things that you acquire, the items, etc. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could say that like teeters into like sim category, but like I think it's it qualifies it. I'm actually leaning towards no, and I think really? I think Teddy, you just nailed it. I think I don't see it now really as an RPG. I see it as like a, a hunting sim. And that's kind of where I leave it cuz I don't see the characters developing. I mean, uh, you could you could argue that statistically you just transfer it to the items and that's their development. But they almost feel separate from that because you can switch those at any time 
and try something completely different and then you lose it all and it's so it's all really just like messing with your gear which to me is sim and then on the other side of it there's no real story and your character doesn't like change in any meaningful way or grow or learn anything or get to any chat like overcome any challenge aside from the next (laughs) the next mark so i'm gonna say no as an rpg it's tough i think if you would have asked me back in like 2015 16 if it was i would have definitely said yes but like the rpg mechanics are more are more for you as a player than your character it's so strange uh but i think they they're they're monster hunter actually shot themselves in the foot here because they actually do have rpgs called monster hunter stories (laughs) (laughs) So, so now they actually have like a side series of two rpgs (laughs) <laughs> that that are uh, like undoubtedly rpgs so the the main series is sort of like its own weird thing uh i think it, it i think it could be considered but i think i, I am gonna lean more in the no category because if you you don't have to be an rpg fan to like get everything out of monster hunter that you want the and, only one i yeah. have experience <clears throat> with besides stories i did dabble in it was kind of not into it but i played three a lot on 3ds uh and I kind of just felt like I was getting nowhere. I actually didn't feel like I was advancing. Yeah, same. And so, same. <laughs> same. It's very, it's um, very, very <laughs> grindy. Which grinding yeah. is like a feature of RPGs. That's but like true. I, I, I do think that maybe the, maybe the fact that the grind doesn't advance your party <laughs> necessarily yeah. actually is detrimental <laughs> to yeah. calling this an RPG. Now, you know what? You bring up party. You do actually have a party because you have helpers that you can also level up and Ads. get new gear for and stuff, too. Yeah, the little, little palicos. Mm-hmm. So you actually do have a party. So I guess that factors in in a way. I, I do want to be clear when we're doing this to these games. In no way am I saying that because it's not an RPG, do I not like it? Can I? Can we be well, clear uh, yeah. and establish that? Because I, yeah. I, dude, I'm a fucking huge Monster Hunter fan. Right. <laughs> I, I could see people saying like, "Well, yeah, it is," and, and assuming I, they're like, "It's offensive or not." It, we in no way mean that. We just, we just, we're just trying to define it as as far as an RPG goes. I actually don't like the Monster Hunter series. I'll put that out there that in this one case I don't. But, <laughs> um, but in general, I don't. I'm not trying to shoot anything down as being bad or good. Yeah, I, I want to echo that and say, like, but across all the games, I've probably put somewhere in the range of 400 hours into these fucking games. So, like, <laughs> I definitely love Monster Hunter. So I'm not saying anything derogatory either. Right, right. I, I'd I like could to just third that and say Monster yeah. Hunter is, in fact, a farming sim. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I 100% agree yeah. with you, Teddy. I think it probably falls a little more into the simulation category than, than it does role playing. Okay, we got our first no, boys. We have it. So columns, it is columns. Yeah, give it, give it a columns. I will give it. Bison. Are you giving them the? Oh, you're doing the bison. <laughs> you figured it out, Alex. <laughs> I, I've just been watching the stream, so I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> All of them say bear counter on it. We just got to find out who that <laughs> motherfucker is. All right. Okay, this one is going to be interesting. Clear the room! <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. This has been the... This, this, I mean, this is like the contested one, right? <laughs> okay, can I, can I give a little backstory to this? Yeah. Um, one of the first games that I ever got was given to me by my sister's boyfriend at the time. He gave me three games. He gave me Donkey Kong Country, uh, uh, a Wing Commander, I think that was what it was, and then uh, Legend of Zelda, a Link, be- or uh, uh, not Link Between Worlds, that'd be impossible, uh, a Link to the Past. He handed it to me and said, this is what we call an RPG. And from that point until I played Chrono Trigger, that's what I thought an RPG was when I ever heard the term. So I have like a an early childhood shaping of what an RPG is based off of Zelda. Disclaimer, uh, we have Breath of the Wild on the screen, but we're just talking about the series as a whole. Right. 
<clears throat> I think the influence of the traditional tabletop role playing elements are very clear in the original Zelda. Mm. I, I think that we we haven't really talked about environment. I don't think you need fantasy for it to be RPG like, but it is kind of theme that's in the early rpgs so back in the days i think they definitely would have called the original zeldas rpgs yeah i agree oh that's tough for me though i don't like i don't i've never associated zelda with rpgs in my brain <laughs> um so yeah this is tough let's and let's go back to we... definition What's the yeah, definition? Yeah. yeah. Um, Character advancement. The sake of the story. I guess that's true. You do. I guess Link does progress <laughs> in terms of like skills and, st and stats in a way. I think in this one, especially the Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Breath of the Wild, especially. You actually get like stat upgrades throughout the game and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you got them in all of them, Zeldas? theoretically. Yeah, theoretically, exactly. Yeah. But are there are there any Zeldas you think are like more so RPGs than others in the series? You you actually posted one in the chat before we decided the rules for this. Is Zelda two actually has leveling up, <laughs> straight up leveling up. <laughs> hmm. Like you gain experience in that game, which is like the most RPG I think a Zelda has ever gotten. Is the second game. Mechanically, yes, it is. It's like clearly the 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 RPG of the Zeldas. I think the first one and Breath of the Wild probably also earn their spot as like mostly like action RPG like. I think you get very far that NES one without a couple of heart containers. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. I'm trying to think, because like when you get around like the span from maybe like ocarina just just talking main games like the console games ocarina to like skyward sword those feel a little more like i don't know like less rpg to me because they're more just kind of like the a, a, a narrow path of like a, a, you know advancement within the the game so i don't know if that would count and that know. that's a good point and and Here's where I get hung up and and it, this is this might sound shallow and I I totally understand but in a traditional RPG, y you can spend time to make your character stronger through, I mean, I, well, I'll say grinding, but through creating, like, in improving that relationship with your character. Whereas yeah. Zelda, you're, you can find secrets to make yourself better and whatever. But in general, you're kind of at a set trajectory throughout. The most grindy thing about some of those games are just like getting the money, right? Getting the rupees. Yeah. Like you can grind for rupees. <laughs> and we're back at Monster Hunter. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Is Zelda just Monster Hunter? Confirmed? <laughs> <laughs> Alex, clip that. <laughs> that is so hard. Yeah. Oh. Now there there is usually a a big focus on story on narrative, but usually not with the main character. <laughs> for a lot of the time, it's usually not with the main character. Yeah, you know, I don't think of Zelda for story. I know that the newer ones they tried to add more into it, and with like the last like three generations or so, they've like let's tie it right back into the. Zelda timeline that apparently exists. Oh no! Please, dude, please don't bring up the timeline. <laughs> but like, I never I looked at Zelda as like a really a story game. I looked at almost like Mario. Like it's like I'm supposed to save the princess, and here are the steps that I take to do it, and that's that's like it. Guess where I'm getting caught up is that in order to advance said story, you do actually need the upgrades and items that come with the dungeons. True. Uh, and also, if we were going by a different definition of RPG, I don't want to introduce too many, but if you <laughs> go by like the more traditional environmental dungeon crawly, like it's literal dungeons you're going through. True. This has the like the the 
um, narrative characteristics or exploration characteristics of any traditional RPG. Mm -hmm. Unless you go Wind Waker-esque and then it's a little more tricky or Skyward Sword, I guess. But even then, yeah. still going into dungeons. This is... So it's subjective. And so you it's know, just up to your personal interpretation. I think... Here's, 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 I think, the big thing for me is at the heart of it, at the very core, like when it was made and, and the, the spirit of it, it is an RPG through and through. As RPGs as a genre and games have developed, I think they've strayed from what this is. So I'm trying to find the right, the right <laughs> through line. I, I, through I would still argue about that because even on like the NES, you had clear games that are RPGs: Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy. You know, games that. Yeah, but I don't think there were enough, and that they hadn't really solidified. Mm. Like this is came out at the same time. Dragon Quest was like the first Ultima, like Ultima is considered the pioneer. Yeah, Ultima. And Dragon sure, yeah. Quest was basically the first like real like console RPG. Then Zelda, wasn't that like the same year? So, I mean, and yeah, it's not turn-based, but I'm okay with that because I, I, I look at it as the core, core experience. Um role-playing as Link. And Link is kind of that approximation for yourself anyway. Like, you are the party. I mean, it's a single person party, but <laughs> so is Dark Souls, right? Yeah. Well, you could have said the same thing about Monster Hunter, though. But at the core experiences, like fantasy elements. Yeah. And like, you are the character, and that's like where the progression elements are, too. I guess I my, my uh, catch up on Monster Hunter is the lack of the character development at all, whereas Link is clearly growing as you're going through the game. Well, Monster Hunter, you're growing, but it's all your hard work. <laughs> That's making you grow. <laughs> That's the it's just not as progression. apparent. Like it's it, it is not as apparent. And like he doesn't grow through it, a story. And again, you could debate whether Link grows through it's these true. stories or not, but in general, he does complete objectives throughout is, the path. You're right. He is in a story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we confirmed something. <laughs> that's in a how story. I feel playing. That, that's how I feel playing a lot of them. Like especially again from the, I think from maybe not Ocarina and Majora, but maybe like Wind Waker up through Skyward Sword for me. Those games definitely feel like there's there's stories about other characters and Link's kind of there. <laughs> for all of it it's like man wouldn't it be cool if we could help Midna get her <laughs> Twilight thing back and stuff it's like yeah but like what is Link doing yeah, he's, 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 a, he, he's a dog guy I guess like it's not really about Link for some of the games yeah but hey even that option of side quests man I guess that's not that's like it's not only relegated to RPGs but they're meaningful you know yeah, so that's pretty cool. I I think Jabber. I think the heart of Zelda is in an RPG. It's turned out different than what gaming RPGs are, but I'm gonna say yes for Zelda being an RPG. Um, I want to go next because I'm actually gonna say no. I, oh. I think it's just I I think the heart of Zelda is in the adventure elements, which to me just makes right. it look more like an adventure art, you know, like like an action adventure game, and and that's how I I always view the series. Yeah, the resident Zelda guy. I'm gonna say yes because I want to archive them on Spencer's channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that? Uh, I... <laughs> nah, I don't know. Don't, don't worry about that. It's, it's a joke. Uh, I, I think. Um, think it. I would be nitpicking a little bit. Say no. Okay, so we got a yes on Zelda, and Alex. By the yeah. way, I'm like one foot in your boat too i've always looked at it as an action rpg or sorry action adventure i just yeah. i don't know i i can't shake that it's a yes it's and a yes. oh that's not a bison <laughs> it's a modern interpretation of the bison <laughs> all right no introduction, and we don't, we mean the series, and probably <laughs> most of the what you'd call spinoffs or parts of the family. Dark Souls. 
Is it an RPG? Um, this might be the hardest yes you're going to get from me on this show. So, yes. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? I think it's I think it's a yes, but also I think so Dark Souls is such a weird phenomenon where it has also spawned its own genre of games that are not RPGs. <laughs> if you play True. a lot of them, it's, yeah. So it, it's like it was built as an action RPG, but it also became its own. Like Souls like is its own genre now, and some of the games you can pick up and play in that ser- in like that genre are not RPGs, and, and and even one of the games by FromSoft, which Sekiro, is not really an RPG. So it's it's strange. It's like it started out as an RPG, but did it did it stay? <laughs> is it still considered an RPG? <laughs> yeah, or like it's its own thing. I think you uh, uh, level up your character in between, like when you die and stuff. Absolutely. When wait, when you die? Yeah, don't you go to some realm and like you have to like you do something that I just I play a, like an hour of Bloodborne, but I don't remember it very well. You you collect the ability to to level up as you play, and then you can spend it at certain points to level up. Yeah. Yeah. Dying. To me, dying. Dying yeah. makes you lose the experience you're carrying, which is the punishment for dying. So <laughs> that's why you don't want to die. <laughs> so is, is, is that you're playing the game carrying you, so much of what's essentially experience to like level up your? Do you retain anything when you die? Well, yeah. Any you once you spent your experience, it's that it's spent. Like you, you can't lose yeah, it. That's permanent. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you are upgrading your character. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, pretty. You're like, I mean, sorry, go ahead. It's a yes to me. Like, it's pretty evident. I haven't really played much of these, but actually, so I actually think that the Dark Souls series is the most RPG I've ever seen of a game. Uh, I don't think I've experienced an RPG that it really is more of like your decisions matter because they literally matter all the time and you get punished if you make bad ones. And it's like the heartbreak that you feel matches your character because you literally can lose tons of progress if you're not careful. I don't know. Just the feelings that it brings out is the most pure RPG I've probably ever played. So... Yeah. Not not only that, but just speaking on Dark Souls and like the Souls, I haven't played Elden Ring yet, but I'm sure it's also I'm I'm 100 sure it's there as well. Is that also the the feeling of actually playing a role is very important in his games, especially if you go in blind, because unlike other games where it's like here's the story, you have to beat Sethiroth or whatever, get the it's Dark Souls. You're just adventuring most of the time, and you come across these like abominations and like things you can fight, and it's just like you are playing out like your own story in a sense mm-hmm. and like a lot of, and like a lot of the game that it's very unique for the for, for the genre to to have that like feeling where like i don't know like, like going into dark souls like first time i, I know who the hell i'm gonna fight or what the what's what, what's happening half the time it's like that's for me to to find out as i'm playing yeah okay so that's it's a no Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no yeah right, i have to get out my wikipedia for this next one <laughs> yeah i have no clue what this next one is so this was sent by fred durst it is 13 <laughs> sentinels Thanks, ages fred. i can't make that any bigger but 13 sentinels ages rim Do you have a mouse the mouse with like the inner wheel. Yeah, I'm hitting control and sc- scrolling. It's not doing anything. I'm trying to, I'm trying to squint at it. Here, let me let me see. <laughs> yeah, I can do. I I, move, I opened it in my browser, so I can. I'll bring it over. But there it is. It's, Looks it's little... pretty brutal, but that's. No, oh, well, Atlas is in the corner. Go ahead. And... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me look it up. Because I know a tiny bit about it, but not enough to do. Do you think talk. if there was like a RPG, uh, like a RPG club, like a dance club or something, and there was a bouncer outside, do you think all you'd all you'd have to do is show like an Atlas logo? <laughs> yeah, and you'd be like, "Come on in." <laughs> yeah, they're NIS. <laughs> Catherine, yeah, or, yeah, is that like R- NIS. 
RPG no, Catherine's or... Atlas. Yeah. All yeah, right. but it's, I'm saying it's that like RPG, like snowboard kids. <laughs> The, the game Whatever. is the game is divided between side-scrolling adventure segments and real-time strategy battles. That sounds kind of RPG-ish. I'm looking at the gameplay here. RTS though, that's its own thing. Like Herzog Spy, am I going to call that an RPG? It's true. Um, I, I think on like the 18th of this month, Minecraft Legends comes out, which is the RTS. Are we going to call that an RPG? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Characters level up with experience points and gain passive bonus effects while sentinel abilities and attributes can be raised using meta chips gained during battles. I like chips. That sounds like an RPG. I have stock in Facebook. Oops, I didn't say that. Uh that's a joke. Um meta, get it? Yeah. I have meta <laughs> chips. Anyways. This is hard because like we gave Symphony of the Night the RPG pass. Basically for the same reasons. I just don't know enough about this one. Right. So with with Symphony of the Night, I I feel like it all tied together really well. And it very well could tie together well in this game. I've we just never played it. Like I've never if it could be that there's like like there was a game I played called Summon Night Six. I played the Summon Night on Game Boy Advance, and that was definitely an RPG. And then I played it on like a PS ps4 and it was like a completely different game it was like five like 10 percent was a, a tactics game and then the other crap hold on something messed up and then the other Alex, you know um yeah oh sorry go ahead the other 90 percent was a freaking uh what do you call it a visual novel and they didn't really tie oh. into each other so it was like, do you okay. call that an RPG? I wouldn't, but I don't. I don't know how. Ori this is a is a good question too. I would maybe if I had thought about that, I would have put that on here. Like I feel like Ori had those um, level up mechanics and was basically like the side scroller platformer. Would you call Ori an RPG? I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a really hard one. We only included this because uh, Fred Durst put it on the list. So, wasn't Fred? Okay, it wasn't Fred Durst. It was uh, Chad Kroger. <laughs> if it was Giga Chad Kroger, Giga Chad. Look at the thirteen Sentinels. <laughs> <laughs> for the end. Spencer, what the fuck was that game you reviewed for Review Month? That was like, it was like you throw it into a pot and make a shoe or whatever the hell you said. <laughs> You're not talking about <laughs> throw it into a pot and oh, make yeah. a shoe. Yeah, the the game you reviewed for yes. review month. Teddy got it. Oh. Atelier it? Riza. Oh, okay. I was like, is this that? No, this isn't that. I just, I just love that line from that review. You were like, you throw it into the pot and make a shoe. I don't, I don't know what the, what you said, but it was if funny. You, if you throw it in a pot and make a shoe, do you get an RPG? That's <laughs> the question. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this one, uh, I mean, just based on the description alone, I'm going to have to say yes, but that's with like a big asterisk next to it. <laughs> I'm down to say yes with an asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Asterisk. That's fine. A- Aster. Asteroth from Soul Calibur. What kind of asterisk do you want? Let's put Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. Son- that's baby Sonic too, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and we got. Oh, it's Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the disturbing Shrek face. <laughs> okay, here's one that I'm going to have to just wash my hands of almost, but Yakuza. And just to be clear, we're we're actually talking about the games prior to Like a Dragon, because now they are fully RPGs. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You made Yakuza. the conversion. Yeah, so maybe like Yakuza 0 and 1 through 6 and maybe like the Judgment series and stuff. They're all kind of under, under the same umbrella. And then just had another one that is called Like a Dragon, confusingly. Shit, Ishin, right? Like a Dragon? I don't know. It's, in Jap- it's the feudal Japan themed one. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so confused. <laughs> Yakuza is super interesting because it's basically a fighting uh, mini world game. 
But you clearly play as Kiryu or Goro and level up your characters in order to advance through the game. You got to be a badass fighter to get through some of these hordes of enemies. Uh, it was so much um, like a Dragon Quest game that they made its own kind of spinoff. You know, that was cute. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Alex? Just to be clear, that's not a spinoff. That's how the series is going to be for now on. They, they said that, <laughs> that the main series is well, going to be... It was like Yakuza Dragon. 7, but they just dropped the number. Yeah, I guess they make it less confusing on like why they it would just change gameplay all of a sudden. <laughs> but Yeah. Uh, I, so my arguments on saying yes for the the main uh, Kiryu arc of, of Yakuza, let's call it that, is that there is... Uh, character progression with with stats and a, and a skill tree. There is a narrative, a very long narrative through these titles. Um, there are side quests you can do, and mm. you can act, you can actually grind to raise your stats. Um, so it's I true. think those are very RPG like mechanics for the series. Yeah, very compelling. For arguing the case of Kiryu. Uh, what would be the things that don't make it RPG? I can't even. I guess it's not traditional, but who, you don't need it to be traditional. Yeah, the the combat is very like beat 'em up focused. Um, uh, I would say honestly, that's that's probably the one thing that I would say about the main series that they that that once they did, I think that was why it was so easy for them to go full RPG is that they could just drop the beat 'em up mechanics and go turn based in the in like a dragon, and it just worked completely as an RPG. So I, I think mm -hmm. it's hard to argue that these early titles aren't also just RPGs, but with like a different combat system. Hmm. Guess what's hard is that the combat system isn't necessarily RPG like because it's very skill based. Like you actually have to, you know, have some prowess over it. Whereas I feel like some of the more I don't know, Final Fantasies or whatever, like the Chrono mm -hmm. Triggers, like when they're they are active time. Um like you could still kind of cheese your way through. That having to be like a button masher, I don't know, but I guess Dark Souls argues that. So, but but, but but you could grind experience, right, and still up your stats and get better at the combat that way, if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you have to grind carry you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the grind not carry you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to say that that your progression in this game is based on how much you fought and how much you've developed. So. Yeah, let's give it the RPG pass. Clue, With the clue, 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 clue. Spencer, you can hop on those games, man. They're good. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I, I said it many times, but I just do not care for like Asian stuff. It just, it's just oh, completely off-putting to me. It's very Asian, it's <laughs> like his culture. Yeah. Well, maybe. All right. Next up is the tactical RPG XCOM. Excuse me and Spencer as we lit out a, a, a little squee of <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh yeah. <laughs> it's an RPG. <laughs> um I love XCOM, but I would actually probably not call it an RPG. Really? What would you call it? I think it's just it's very it's like it's focused on the tactic element of combat almost too much <laughs> to consider it an rpg you know like it's it's i don't know because like there's it's lacking other things that i think would consider it an rpg it's lacking a really cl a clear follow-through narrative and characters for a lot of it um there is a party but it's a fully customizable party so i guess that does count um but it's more just like you just you just pick the characters and give them whatever and call them. You can name them whatever the hell you want. And they're just characters you, you create, basically. Um, but the game is just focused on its combat <laughs> and like management systems of like your base and stuff okay. and like research. Yeah. So I don't know if you would consider that an RPG. That's a really good point. Maybe it's more of more management sim than RPG. I always 
felt so close to all the characters because you 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 know you interact with them so much and you're leveling them up but maybe maybe you're right maybe i should just consider it more of a, a hardcore management simulator and not i an use um advanced wars as like a placeholder here no mm, no okay and and X -com, X -com is very much its own thing I guess like combat wise, the closest thing I think you've played is maybe, maybe Mario Rabbids. <laughs> Just like <laughs> baby's first XCOM. <laughs> um okay. yeah, so I, if that gives you a sense. <laughs> like the you Names only have Steve. you only have like a limited number of characters. It's usually like five to six tops. It's been a while. But very, very limited. And they level up and it has permadeath, so if they die, they're they're completely out, and you have to get a new character. So, um, yeah, I think I'm with you, Alex. I I agree. You won me over. It's it's a it's a management simulator. Yeah, and you know, even like I guess you know, you could you could argue like Fire Emblem has permadeath, but like the characters well, in XCOM where they are just they are characters you just create and name or whatever. They don't have characteristics beyond like. The stats you give them. <laughs> Fire Emblem oh, has okay. Fire Emblem has gameplay permadeath, but the characters are still in the story because Fire because <laughs> yeah, XCOM doesn't really have a story. <laughs> XCOM story is that aliens are here and you need to go stop it. <laughs> right, yeah. I see <laughs> the story. So it's they're just more like units. They're not integral. Mm -hmm. Correct. I can see that. Yeah, you do get attached to them, like like Spencer said, but I don't think it's enough to call it an RPG. So strategy RPG exists. It's just this ain't it. No, it's good though. It's fucking good. I love XCOM, but dude, that that is a save scum game for sure. <laughs> I didn't know what save scumming was until I played that game, and I'm like, oh fuck. And then that's all you do. <laughs> yeah, it does suck when you're like going through a battle and you just fucking eat it, and you're like, well, <laughs> <laughs> try again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this next one, Alex insisted we add it. It's Minecraft. Would you like to hear my my defense first? Yes. On see. why I think this should be here because you are playing as a character that can level up through stats. There, there is in game experience, and there's also a follow through. Not really narrative, but a follow through progression to finish the game. You can beat Minecraft. You can uh, mm. defeat the Ender Dragon and beat Minecraft. So there is a, some some sort of a a follow through for that. Um and you can okay. gain and craft new weapons, which also I guess also counts as a stat. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. But but is anybody doing that? So, yeah, maybe your first time you play. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just building stuff and making stuff and doing stuff. <laughs> so, mm. Yeah, I just don't think the game incentivizes that. I think it's build, build, build. Yeah, I literally said before we started, I just wanted to include <laughs> this so we could put Minecraft Steve on the thumbnail. <laughs> that's that's Marker. Yeah, so if you clicked on it, you is. got clickbaited by Alex. Whoa! <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I think there are RPG elements. There, there might be mini kids that actually do pick up Minecraft today. You know, it's been out forever now, and think of it as like an RPG type game. Oh my god, kids! I am so sorry if that's the case. <laughs> it's not. It's fun, but it's not. <laughs> Teddy, no, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> so no, Steve for Teddy. Oh, Spencer, here we go. Sunglasses. And Mewtwo, oh, Spencer, the sequel. Spencer, here we go. Uh, the honors. I, I fucking love that box art for two. Looks like crap. Um, Shut up, Spencer. <laughs> That's awesome. I want a poster of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's an RPG in the worst of ways. So, yeah, I'll say yeah. yes. <laughs> Explain yourself. Explain yourself right now. <laughs> It, <clears throat> I I said Dark Souls was like the most pure RPG experience you could get. I think maybe I was wrong. Maybe Shenmue is the most pure RPG experience you can get. 
and you totally shouldn't get it because it is it's almost so pure that it's more boring than real life. That's how bad Shenmue <laughs> is. Oh no, man. I think Shenmue is <laughs> charming. It's, we, of course, we did a whole map out of it for the first game. I think Shenmue is like has its own strange charm that definitely isn't for everybody. But I, I would think if we're going to put Yakuza as a RPG, it's definitely hard to argue against Shenmue then because it's it was the predecessor of Yakuza, and and hold on, it Teddy, and it's okay. it's it, it it did start life as Virtual Fighter RPG. I guess my thing though, it, like the reason Yakuza feels more RPG like is because it is so present throughout the game, whereas leveling up your fighting in this game is so inconsequential. Like, yeah, you don't really have to do it. It's fun, it's cute, but it, I don't think it has any bearing on how you finish the game. It's true. It is. It is more narrative focused. You see his action, three D action adventure. You see action in this game. I, I see almost zero action in this game. I see it as, I see it as boring <laughs> adventure. Action, more like passion. <laughs> you yeah, like passion the adventure. the fork. The, the the forklift sections in, in the first game? That is not <laughs> a positive. Game. <laughs> that, that is not me complimenting the game. If you took that as a compliment to Shenmue, you're misunderstanding me. <laughs> I think... Fuck, man. I don't know. Shenmue's so weird. <laughs> it's, it's hard to... Hard to pinpoint. I think it is. It's a role playing game. You play. You're role playing as Shenmue in his day to day, or Ryu in his day to day life <laughs> as, as, as Shenmue, Shenmue. <laughs> yeah, as Home Alone. There he is. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You're role playing as Ryu in his day to day life, and it couldn't be more boring. But it's yeah. that's what it is, right? It's what is true. It is, yeah, and it is <laughs> in terms of role playing. It is very like it's almost to the T to where like, man, I have to be at the cafe at five o'clock, or else I'm gonna miss this event that I have to do today. <laughs> yeah. Then you might as well have the Animal Crossing argument. Hmm. Yeah, that, that that is true. Is is is, is it more sim? Yeah. Well, I I just think Animal Crossing doesn't have a story. Like doesn't have oh, a, well a driving. The story is that Tom Nook uh, is gouging mm. you for all your money, <laughs> and you have to pay him back. That's the story. Our credits. <laughs> Capitalism. That's the story. I mean, Shenmue is all <laughs> not all story, but Jesus, like a lot of story. Of yeah, there is a lot of quest story. for revenge. Does story make an RPG it's solely? Good, it's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question because it's almost exclusively that. Yeah, and there are there all are almost no stats. You can like learn and moves and new techniques, but there are almost no stats for Ryu. For Ryu. Got it, guys. Vis visual novel. <laughs> X space, point and walk. You make a good point. That's a very good point. I think Spencer could be swayed. He played it on his channel. <laughs> That's very true. It's live streamed on RPG Archive. All the all the hours. Yeah. If you want to see me napping, so, you can find it in that. This one, I think, I, I think, I think more so than Zelda. This is the murkiest one that we have to decide on. <laughs> because it's like, if they, I think, if they added a little more progression for for Rio, you definitely would have been like, oh yeah, it's an RPG, definitely. <sighs> I think Teddy may have vote. I think Teddy may have won me over. I think I'm taking it away from an RPG and calling it like almost like a walking simulator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's a damn good one. I think Shenmue's a walking simulator. <laughs> no, it's not. I think Shenmue is a walking <laughs> simulator. That's it. <laughs> Well, listen, I just we just want to clarify, even if we don't say it's an RPG, it doesn't mean it's a bad game, okay? I love no, it does. I love it does for this one. It does for <laughs> this one. This one's terrible. Shinmu is so bizarre. I fucking love it. <laughs> I'm giving it's it a, a no. no. It's a no for me. Boo. And what makes it... What's the, what's the image for bad game? Let's find that. Um, what's this? Reggie? Geo dude, 
Spectrobes? That's bad. Spectrobes is an RPG. <laughs> the button map should be on the list. Just just put me, because I love Sh- Shenmue. So put me eating the cheese. There, there you, you go. go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Dual cheese action. <laughs> okay. Now we jump to the <laughs> N64. <laughs> and I don't know if we're going to include the 360 stuff, but Banjo Kazooie. I want Teddy to explain himself because he's the one. Right, hear me out. <laughs> Listen, okay. Uh, Banjo gets honeycombs. They are essential to uh, this progression in the game. <laughs> uh, you can get upgrades. There's a bunch of optional uh, side jiggies. You don't have to get all the jiggies. Um, has a game show. We opened with a game show on the episode about RPGs. Um, you have a party, Banjo and Kazooie, and has story confirmed. <laughs> Evil Witch. You know, this is classic RPG action. Uh, so, how about it, guys? No, Banjo Kazooie. No. <laughs> it's a platformer. <laughs> it's a platformer. I'm sorry. Zelda, yeah. Zelda was like right on the cusp of like, I don't know. <laughs> this one is like the other side of it. Oh, come I mean, on. It's a platformer I, with RPG elements. That's Castlevania, sh- Symphony of the Night. <laughs> I do think that Banjo probably has more world building than a lot of platformers, especially at hey, that time. Banjo oh. was originally going to be an RPG. That's true. Under Alex's requirements, that makes it count. That's true. Project Dream. There you go. So Alex, with, the with Anderson answer. and the and the, and the pirate. No, it's not. It's uh, they. <laughs> it almost it resembles almost nothing from the, the original <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, that's worth a shot. All right, <laughs> you tried. Give it respect. All right, here we go. I'm afraid on this one that we're only going to hear from Alex, but hopefully Teddy. Have you dabbled in this one? <laughs> All right. Alex, convince us, Sonic. This one oh, isn't series uh, exclusive. You... It's Sonic Frontiers. Uh, so what did we give Zelda, right? What did we give Zelda? Uh, I believe we got it, gave it an RPG. Okay, so here's my framework for... Just, just Frontiers, by the way. Not the other Sonic games, just Frontiers. It's Breath of the Wild with somehow, in a Sonic version, more character stats <laughs> than Breath of the Wild. More progression. Because you actually have level, you have you have four different steps that you can level up to level ninety nine on each one, which does greatly affect how you play the game. I mean, I haven't played it, so we're only <laughs> so, so that's my pitch. Is that like as weird as it seems? This one might be more RPG than Breath of the Wild because every other element from Breath of the Wild is also pretty much present. And Sonic Frontiers. I love that Sega was like, what should we do with the Sonic franchise? Let's copy the game that came out like six years ago or however long it was. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I mean, that's like the that was the basic complaint about Sonic is that like, well, you just run forward. And it's like, well, now you can run everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> was that in the boardroom meeting? <laughs> probably yeah it was well, like, you can run everywhere fucker like people people are complaining <laughs> that you're just running straight it's like well let them run whatever they want <laughs> that was the pitch <laughs> sonic frontier rpg so you give it a rpg like, i mean by this logic we have to <laughs> well by, it's only alex voting by so this logic 100%. Yeah. <laughs> alex is holding his hostage on that one <laughs> Peter Molyneux, here we go oh boy <laughs> Oh, Plan a boy. tree. Does it, is the third definition of RPG when a promise <laughs> is broken over and over again? Yeah. What was the other one? He said you could plant a tree and it would grow in real time. He said you could like marry people and yeah. then like they would age or something. Yeah. He, I don't know. It, he made so Peter Mall. Fuck Peter Molyneux, man. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Xbox. <laughs> but I think I think. uh Fable's a yes for me. I think if we're, if we're getting Zelda the pass, we have to get Fable the pass because it's a little more RPG than Zelda. Yeah, yeah an RPG. I agree with there. Yep. It's clearly an RPG. Yeah. Well, and just was, because we say something is an RPG doesn't mean we're saying it's a good game. 
<laughs> I am. I like the, the first one. Yeah. yeah, the first two. I like the first two. Three's where you can eat a dick. Uh, <laughs> Three is dick eating. You're all free to like whatever you Gobble like. Gobble your whole cock. Is, is, is this the last Jesus. one? No. We got two more. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, this one and then one more. Oh, okay. Uh, I got it. I got it. <clears throat> I have a lot of bad opinions on fables, but I'll just, apparently they're not popular, so we'll move on. Teddy and I will be doing the archive. Stay <laughs> 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 tuned for RPG month. Pokemon. <laughs> So this was interesting because your character d- it does not really level up. Um, it's it's a monster mm. tamer adventure game, but is it an RPG? Yeah. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Party. You have a party. I I think you can more. I think honestly, if you just boil it down to the basics, the Pokemon are just your skills your your abilities that you can gain throughout the game that level up so i guess you do kind of progress <laughs> you can't gonna, get very far awesome in this player. game without doing it yeah true your level five get you yeah no no can you can you just mash the a button and use like the strongest attacks and win the game yeah pretty much <laughs> for most of them <laughs> If you get a Kadabra, a good RPG. Destroy this game. Um, yeah, I would say yes. The the Pokemon are conduits for progress and your own personal representation. So yeah, I... you heard it. You hear hear first the conduit on we. <laughs> it's an RPG. <laughs> what? What a joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's <was> so good. <laughs> All right. All and right. Last but not least. The ga- <laughs> oh, here we go. Mario Golf. Go for it, guys. Use the Game Boy Color one, though. Use the Super Rush. Well, I thought, you know what? I thought I mean, we were just talking about the whole Super, series. The Super Rush still kind of counts. I, I, mean, of. I was just going to talk about the whole series. I, I, I thought that's how we were... No, we, nah, because the whole series doesn't work like that. Oh, okay. We specifically wanted the, the, the Game Boy. I can go grab they that. They leave Super Rush because Super Rush is basically the Game Boy one. Yeah, they, they they brought elements back from the Game Boy ones, so just keep it up there. It's fine. Okay. This Mario looks good in those trousers. Hey. Um, and Toad. So the original Mario Golf on Game Boy Color had like a story mode where you could level up your swing and your shots and your stuff. Um, and I think it was pretty hard to win the tournaments without that. So the Mario Golf on Game Boy Color is the RPG you never knew that you needed in a sports game. Oh, it's, it's true. <laughs> Cam- Cam- okay, Camelot also made, was it Golden Sun, right? And then the Mario Golf on Ga- Game Boy and GBA have full-fledged RPG-looking adventure modes. That's right, okay. Spencer. Okay, but let's challenge this. Are they simulation or are they RPG? Well, you take turns. It's turn-based. You just take turns <laughs> swinging the club. <laughs> it, is Golf Story an RPG, Spencer? Mm. Yes. Um, you played that. You're gonna say no. It's, sim- it's it's similar. It's similar. Oh, sorry, it's Mario Golf's story expanded. Yeah, I guess it's an RPG. Mario Golf hey! gets the pass. That's not <laughs> no, 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 no no no. Mario Golf gets the pass. No 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 no. Don't no, understand, no, no, no. Spencer. Uh need to try before you okay what's the story of mario golf let's hear the story of mario golf on the you Game play Boy. as a character an anime oh, protagonist created. yeah Human. that you create. not even a mario and, character yeah and you need to golf you just gotta golf I gotta, gotta golf, golf. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay is there that the, go. that's the story so in, it's also the focus yeah. the, of, of Mario Golf on Game Boy Color. The focus is the story mode. Okay. Mm-hmm. But the story is that you got to golf. Yeah. yeah. Win the tournaments. Be okay. the best. It's, that's, and, that's Pokemon. Pokemon is be the best Pokemon. Yeah, imagine Pokemon, but with golf. 
Well, in all the new Gone Pokemons, they have a, they also have stories that you wouldn't <laughs> give a shit about. Go on, Emma. Uh, we I call them RPGs. <laughs> Uh, I would say in golf story, there is an actual story of like trying to revive a, your dad, your like dad's golf. Okay, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're trying qualifying to win. Better story, yeah, yeah. You bet, yeah, but you're trying to win the, the golf. I don't know. I, I just through that he your character grows as he progresses through these different meets different characters and stuff. And there's a story at X and Y about how you go to France and no, 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 don't try to leave out. I ain't talking about Pokemon anymore. We established that one. I want to know Mario Golf. <laughs> Mario Golf is an RPG. Well, I guess you guys are just going to outvote me. I'm, I'm going to put my foot down and say <laughs> yeah, no yeah, for yeah, the record. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Spencer, you can argue with us all you want, uh, but we are going to outvote you. <laughs> yep, yep. Consider yourself outvoted. <laughs> yes. Mario Golf better be in the thumbnail. Why? <laughs> Why? I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> well, there are the top have. thumbnail contenders here. I think Rio, Rio, and Joe, Sonic, uh, Steve, Steve, here you think. Are you? <laughs> This was a lot of Area. fun. I liked I, I like this format of trying to decide if a game belongs in a certain genre. <laughs> Don't know if there's any other genre we can do this with. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> we can figure it out. Or was I scared? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That one could work, honestly. I think there's some games we can probably weasel some horror stuff out of. Like, like Gears of War. Or Gears of War, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Try to decide. Yeah. There's other things you could do. Like, is it a top five GameCube game or something? You know, like. Whoa, that would be an interest. Uh, I guess we're going inside baseball on that one, but listen, letting the viewers hear us talk about that. But is it a game? That's that's a good one too. Is this a game? That's a good episode. I'll bring my of all ball. time. <laughs> cup and a sports game. Yeah, ball, yeah, ball in a cup. Is this a game? <laughs> <laughs> When's the ball in a cup map out? <laughs> Where we're all in just your like backyard. trying to trying to flip the ball into the into yeah. The cup. <laughs> I well, I have to go in a minute. Let us so in. We should, probably, we should probably wrap this up. I gotta go. Get us out. Movie. Family Feud style. <laughs> all right. Uh... All of these games you can see we've marked as either RPG or not. Uh, nobody won because it's not about winning or losing, but thank you to Alex from the Turbo Zone family. Didn't move one, by the way, but yeah! And thank you to Teddy from the Major T family. Hey, T family. Represent. My Irish breakfast story. And... See, see, see you later, everybody, for, for another rendition of Is It an RPG? And then I have a card in my hand or something. And, I throw it. and then the producers come in. Spencer, uh, we just got the, the word. The show's been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Say so fuck you to the camera so all the people at home. What are you going to do? Cancel me? Now this moving to a YouTube platform. Is this where you <laughs> have your breakdown? <laughs> yeah. You have your like, fuck it, we'll do it live breakdown. Hell yeah, dude. That's where I want my career to go. Is it be so successful at something to finally get on like a national scale, national level where they show me live. And then have a mental breakdown on camera. I just want to be like a footnote in a Wikipedia article. That's all. Dennis, this is all your fault. How could you leave that clip of me in the show? I'm so bad. I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> he used to quote that guy all the time. Who was it that that said that? The fuck it, we'll do it live. Bill O'Reilly. Uh, yeah, Bill O'Reilly. He was like, fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> what a pro. <laughs> to play us out. Um, 
bit. Did you guys watch the trailer for that new Indiana Jones? Why are they doing more? <laughs> I like. I, it, there, there's gonna be a scene where Indiana Jones has to like stop and change his adult diaper because he's so fucking old. Oh, oh Indiana! <laughs> oh, oh, Indiana! You're so <laughs> old. Oh, Indiana! Did you, you get any diapers, again, Indiana? <laughs> Come on, Indiana. Indiana, while you were swinging on that rope, did you shit your pants? <laughs> oh, Indiana. Oh. His Indiana. nurse is just following him around, equipping him. <laughs> That's the main That's character classic in the Indiana. <laughs> Indiana, get over here. You gotta, you gotta take your vitamins, Indiana. <laughs> you missed a clue over here. You probably didn't see it because you don't got your glasses on. Yeah, they're in like the, the, the temple of blood or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like Indiana. Indiana, it's time to take your Percocet. <laughs> We're so close to figuring out this mystery. Indiana! <laughs> it's four o'clock. You haven't had your juice yet. <laughs> Indiana, you missed your nap today. You're going to be cranky all day. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> I'd watch that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, why? Why are we writing the new Indiana Jones? I don't put that character in there. <laughs> if they do six, they're gonna have to because Harrison Ford's about to fucking die. So. Yeah, <laughs> he can't die. He was in a plane crash. Remember? He was. No. He what was. Fl- he was flying a plane. Like it was like five or something. Maybe probably more years ago than that. But he was in a fucking plane crash. He was flying the plane. <laughs> Did I forget this? Did I just erase this from my memory? <laughs> yeah, dude is in a plane crash and survived at like his age. It's it's insane. Oh my god! You know what the nurse would say? <laughs> Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he did? He probably did like the Temple of Doom. He got the fucking inflatable uh, raft out out of the the plane and like slid down a mountain or some shit. <laughs> yeah. With his nurse in the back. Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> March 2015. After, oh my god. Me and Deanna, after we survived this plane crash, <laughs> you got a doctor's appointment. <laughs> Don't forget. You know, you know how he survived? It was the nurse all along. She was waiting with the wheelchair, ready to catch him. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. That'd be sick. Some high stunt man action. <laughs> if you've made it through the end of the episode to the Indiana section, leave us a comment. Let us know. What do what do what it's do we all want about them, Indiana? What do we want them to let Indiana. us know? <laughs> Indiana, let us know what the nurse would have Indiana do. <laughs> <laughs> In the comments. That's how we know you truly watched the whole episode. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. I have to go. Hey, y'all! Don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers.